Our first reading comes from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tightly. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish and nurture anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself, and can he seek pardon of his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor, remember the Most High Covenant, and overlook faults. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. And as far as from the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, nor does one die for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. And so, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought in who owed him a huge amount of money. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, O Lord, and I will pay you back in full. Moved to compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave the debt. When the servant left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe me. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put into prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole incident. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had on you? 
Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I guess we pick up from the first reading of the book of Sirach. Let's get that in, in mind. Sirach was a, an author. His name is Sirach. Uh, the, the Greeks put the CH on the end, so they made him Sirach. Don't know why. But Sirach was a member of the Jewish community living in Greek lands. And what he found out was that the Jews were now absorbing the culture of the people. They were, they were reversing enculturation. So instead of keeping faithful to their Jewish roots and their covenant with God, they started adapting the philosophy of the Greeks, which was very, very different. It was humanistic, but it wasn't respectful of God. It, they had a polytheistic system of gods and goddesses, but they just acted out the humanity of, of people. So people started acting like them, like the Greeks. And the book of Sirach points out, listen, we're covenant people, and that applies to you and me. We're covenant people. We're not just people in the streets. We're not just people with no faith. We're covenanted to God, and we as Christians are covenant to God through Jesus Christ and the cross. So we are very serious people. Uh, not in everything we do, but we are serious in a serious covenant, compact relationship with God. And the book of Sirach points out that the conditions of life sometimes lead us to do ordinary things. Now, ordinary means very human very, very often. And people hate. And he says, well, you can't hate. You're a Christian. You're, excuse me. You're, you're in covenant with God. And God knows you. God reads your heart. And he knows, as the topic of my homily is, hate hurts. So he puts it this way, wrath and anger are ha hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tightly. Think about that. If you hate somebody, that is a sin. And you are hugging that sin tightly. Hate is active, by the way. Hate is not, I just don't like that person, I keep away from him or her. That's not hate. Hate, that's dislike. And, and, and you have a right to dislike people as we all do, uh, but always love them, so never wish harm for the person. I was working on my nephew's uh, religious uh, studies recently, and the topic was uh, love. And Salvatore says, well, I, I know what love is, and I asked him, good, what's the definition of love? Wanting the good of the other person. Now, this is not Sal's philosophy. It's our basic theology incorporated into our ethics. Wanting the good of another person. That's love, and get that from the deepest to the slightest in intensity. So the greatest love, of course, would be love of God, wanting the good for God, and God wanting the good for you. And then it goes to human love. But we're talking the opposite today. We're talking about hate. Well, hate is the worst that we can do. Because the scriptures tell us that we're made in the image of God, and if we treat each other like dirt, he's going to treat us like dirt. I mean, tit for tat. And can you blame God, who gives us his life, who gives us his scriptures, who gives us his covenant? And if we hate people, and we shouldn't expect any forgiveness from God. So, and he goes on. That, that book of Sirach is wonderful. Take it and read it. It's, it's not a, a sit down and read it one night kind of book. It's a book that deals with chapters and topics that are very relevant. Today, of course, is hate. But it's an important topic for us to deal with. And, and I like the way the book of Sirach. Sirach could have been an old man when he wrote this. But it comes out in the scripture. He says, hey, think of your last days. You hate now? Your last days are short, and they're coming. What's going to happen if you live hate and God meets you on your last day? Don't go there, because that's going to be very, very painful. And he says, think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor, and remember the Most High Covenant, because he, the Most High, overlooks your faults, our faults, all of us. So hate is the theme of today, and hate hurts. Recently, 
in our society, we have very powerful examples of hate, both political and social. Hate should not exist in any society because it destroys. And when we have to have a movement like the Black Lives Movement to bring to our awareness that hate is deeply rooted in society, it's like a smack in the face. Oh, of course we shouldn't hate. Of course all people are equal. Of course a, a, a neighbor is black or white or brown or yellow. It doesn't matter. We are Christians and we're obligated to treat them with 100% respect and love. That's Christian values. And the way we treat one another is the way God will treat us. So you're prejudiced. God's going to be prejudiced against you. You hate because a person is a different color. God's going to look at you and see the color that you hate the most, and he's going to deal with you as if you are still hating that color. It's kind of weird, but it's, it's tit for tat in a sense. From the Old Testament especially, we get that. In Jesus' session with the Gospel of Matthew, it's completely different. I mean, he takes it and goes to another level of respect. And good old Peter, he's, he's our spokesperson in many, many examples. He comes to Jesus and say, okay, you're talking about forgiveness and hate and all that. If my brother sins against me, is seven times enough? No. Seventy times seven. Innumerable amount of times. Again, be careful. Hate is active. It's not dislike. It's not inadequacy. Hate does things to bring down the name, the reputation, or the person we hate. And reverse that because that is exactly what happens to ourselves. When we hate, it takes a lot of energy out of us. It takes a lot of concentration. It takes a lot of conniving and planning. And who's hurt? We. Sometimes the person, the object of our hate doesn't even know we hate them. But we hurt. See, hate hurts. Hurts us first. So Jesus goes on and gives the example of, hey, let me tell you about heaven. He says, basically. Now, for us to hear that the, the servant owed the master a huge debt, it's okay, a lot of money. It was like he owed the master, the way Jesus used the terminology, he owed the master 100,000 days salary. I, I can't even calculate that. Huge, huge number. And our equivalent would have been several million dollars. And because, don't forget, the master is God, took compassion on this great sinner and forgave him his debt. Be gratitude. The gratitude wasn't there. Be grateful. Didn't know it. So what does the servant go out? And we saw it, we heard it, and the, the servant met another servant who owed him a fraction of the amount and threatened him until he pay it back and got him and his family and put them into prison. Now, I don't know exactly the politics of how that worked, how having someone in prison could pay off a debt, but that's another sociological story, but it made sense to the listeners of Jesus. Master hears this, and this is God talking. I forgave you and you couldn't forgive your brother or sister a little bit. See, forgiveness is also active. It works for the benefit. It's love. It works for the benefit of the other person. So if there's people in your lives that you don't like, keep away from them. But bite your tongue before you speak negative about them. Smack yourself in the face if you start doing something negative about them. Because God is going to treat us that way. You speak negatively about someone, your neighbor, your family, doesn't matter, politician, a person of a different color. Just imagine God coming down and smacking you right in the face and saying, now I'm going to treat you like you treat that person. Yes, black lives matter, brown lives matter, white lives matter. We've never, the average, typical American white person, I wouldn't even say only Catholic, we've never known slavery. Our ancestors, way back in the Greek world, maybe the Roman world, knew slavery. We never knew it. So I never grew up with ancestors who were in, enslaved or, or worked on the cotton fields. So I don't have that 
yearning for anger and, and revenge in me, burning. And for those of our brothers and sisters who are black and who have that, I want, you, I want to ask you forgiveness. No, you're not going to be paid back because your great-grandfather was working in the fields. You're not going to be paid back. But come up to our society as a person. We as white and non-black and black as non-white work together, respect each other. There's no, there's no accomplishment in hate. There's no, nothing that is positive that comes out of hate. And if you need, like, the cream of the crop, the, the, the conclusion of the idea, we go to Paul's letter to the Romans, and he's basically saying, especially to us who are Christians, you don't live for yourself, you live for Christ. Everything we do, live and die, if we're faithful, is in Christ. For this is why he died and rose from the dead that he can prove to us that he is Lord of the living and the dead. So let's live with Christ, not hating, because hate hurts.